Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Today I'm going to show you a really fun, elegant finish using products from a company called Modern Masters. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I've done for today's technique is base coat to surface. Today I use the uh, quartz base primer. Uh, it's a dead flat, has a lot of tooth, it's meaning it's got plaster is going to stick to it versus like a uh, satin eggshell low sheen. I want a nice toothy base coat. Uh, you could use flat latex paint, but for this case I'm going to use my quartz because it's got a dead flat. It actually has, I don't want to say an aggregate to it, but it has a little something in it just kind of really grabs the plaster. Rolled it on, two coats, interior and exterior product, tints with pigment, never paint, cleans up with soap and water. The first thing we're going to do now, or the next step in the process, is take our Modern Masters texture effects, there you go, interior only product, cleans up with soap and water, tints with pigment and never paint, uh, and we're going to put that down as a base coat. So we're going to get our trusty Pavon trial, and we're going to take and stir this up, which I've already done, and whip it up nice and creamy. It does tend to settle. Does it, and when it settles, the moisture's uh, the, the acrylic resins come to the top, and the plaster medium settles to the bottom. Just give it a good whip, and uh, you're ready to go. But for this one, I want a little bit of a textured base coat to work off of. Nothing crazy, nothing heavy. I just want a nice little something underneath of me. I'm putting it on white because it's going to get painted over top of it. And what I'm going to do as I apply it. Come on, get out of there. There we go. Somewhat of a skip trial technique, meaning I'm going to kind of put it on like so. And after I coat it, I kind of, well, not kind of what I do. Let's get the first coat on the whole thing so it makes sense first. So I'm going to coat the whole board or the wall with one coat, 100% coverage, no voids. This is a great product. It's so versatile. We're going to have a lot of fun with this over the next several months. Like so. Okay, so that's done. That's my base. But the nice thing is, like I said, I'm not going for a super smooth base coat. I want to do what we call a skip trial. So I'll put some plaster on my trial like so. And then I kind of, with a flat trial, just kind of hit it. And I'll come back and flatten it out. So I hit it, let it fall off. So I don't want all my, I don't want meaning hit it. I don't want the trial on the angle. I want it kind of flat. And what plaster that's here falls right off onto the surface kind of globs onto the surface and then I'll come back with a little light pressure like so and just flatten all this stuff out knock it around in different directions and the reason I'm going different directions I don't want you to see how we how I put it on hide the method of application all right and then what we're gonna do is finish this real quick and then we're gonna let it dry 100% so we can put our base paint over top of this like so. Got a nice little rugged look to it. Clean off my trial a little bit. I'm going to clean some of this up, meaning I'm getting a little bit of stuff here and there. So let's just, I don't want to see any scratch marks from the trial or from the residue that's hang, the plaster residue on the trial. So I'm just going to come back with a, on a slight angle and a light pressure. And just, there we go. All right, so let's, before I hang that up to dry, I'm gonna show you what we're looking at here. Because it's very hard to see with white on white, but turn it here. See all that's happening right there? Let me fix this light. So from here, it looks pretty. There you go. See all that gnarliness? But it's not like super gnarly. It just has a little bit going on. So we're gonna let this dry 100%, come back and do our next step. See in a bit. Okay, so our texture effects base has dried. Now on to the next step in the process, which will be using Modern Masters Metallic Paint, Pale Gold. 
comes from the factory already tinted, ready to go. You just stir it up when you're ready to use it into your only. Cleans up the soap and water. Uh, because it's a small board, I'm going to use a brush. If it was a big wall, I would have obviously, obviously be using a roller. But you don't need to for the moment. Look at that beautiful color. One of, <laughs> I would say it's one of my favorites, but also I'll go over to that wall, grab another, or the shelves, grab another container and go, oh, that's my favorite color. Oh, I just love the metallics. And I'm just going to push it on here. Again, uh, for the, in case you're curious, the brush I was using is the Purdy Peacock. It's a black nylon bristle brush. I just like it better for latex. It lays everything down, meaning it doesn't leave a lot of brush marks. Now you might notice a little thing happening here with the paint. Metallic paints are fickle. And actually, I'm going to do a whole different video, videos on metallics. Because they're so popular, the problem is applying them to surfaces. Um, you can't just roll it on a wall like latex or a regular old house paint. You got to be super careful because if I do this, I don't know if it's showing up. Let's see. But what happens is the brush is going this way. The light's catching the brush strokes that way. Now if I go this way, the brush strokes are obviously going in a different direction. So the light bounces off of those. So a lot of times you're going to brush something. Maybe give it a, cross, a cross hatch. If you're rolling it, roll the surface top to bottom on your final coat or your final pass. Not coat, but final pass across the wall while the paint is still wet. Roll it top to bottom. And always use small nap rollers. Don't use big heavy and ugly rollers. Okay. And that's it for this step. We're going to let this dry 100%. Before we move on, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so we're dry. Let's get you a close up here. Look, how sh look at the bright, how shimmery and bright that is. Look at that. Now look, there's nothing on the wall just like that. Look how pretty that is. It's just a wall on its own. There you go. Something very, very simple. But, no. Let's get to the Shimmer Stone. Shimmer Stone is a product, a pearlescent architectural coating that shimmers under the light, hence the name Shimmer Stone. Uh, tints with pigment, never paint. Paint will ruin the product. Please don't do that. Interior only, cleans up with soap and water. And I think that's pretty much it. So, what we're gonna do is have some fun. I can get the can open. And it's open. All right, we're gonna take our first color. I've taken it tinted to a color from Benjamin Moore called Feather Down. Let's get some of this on the trial. So, you've seen me use this before in some other techniques. And uh, something a little different. I'm going to put on my trial like so. And I'm just going to kind of push it on. I want a real broken plaster technique. I want to leave a lot of my base color exposed. This is just step one in the process. <laughs> All right. But see how I'm getting all this little, I want some of this materials here, here, and these little spots. I don't, I don't want to see like big islands. Um, it just doesn't look quite right. It doesn't look very natural. I've seen it where people will take, oh, I'm going to put cardboard here, and I'll plaster around it, and I'll remove the cardboard and get this nice big broken jagged edge. Looks like something from a cartoon. I don't want that. And for, uh, materials deteriorate off of a wall. You know, they do fall off in chunks, but oftentimes they'll leave little residual pieces here. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So, we're almost done with this step. go. That's all we're going to do in this part of the process. Let this dry 100%. Come back for part two. But let me give you a close up on it before I put it, put it off to dry. So you can kind of see because these colors, I mean, from here, look at it. But there you see the difference. Okay. Again, I have to look off to the side to see the monitor so I can see what you see and how it looks from your perspective. Look at that. We just want a little bit of gold poking through. All right. Let's let it dry 100%, come back, and do the next step in the process. See you in a little bit. Okay, so that coat is, that layer has completely dried. Let's bring it up here so you can kind of start to see. See how the light dances off of both the metallic base coat and the shimmer stone plaster? It gives you that beautiful luster. All right, next step in the process. We're going to use the shimmer stone to, to do a different color. It's a little bit lighter than the previous color. Looking for my trowel, there we go. Need my trowel, and I need a little spatula. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing, get some material on this blade. And over top of what I've already done, I'm gonna keep building on that. So I'm not gonna try to cover a whole lot. I just wanna add over top of what I've already done. So I'm leaving the gold, I'm leaving my base color, or the first color, which was the uh, feather down. You'll still see some of that. So I'm just gradually building up over top of it, bit by bit. Hey, I got some on my nose. Can't tell. <laughs> oh, well. You'll see, I like to use that little skip trial technique every so often when I'm putting a shimmer stone on. It just gives it a little more interest, a little more depth, texture. It's just fun. You can't put it on too thick. What happens is it starts to crack as it dries. We don't want that. Here, put some over here. So it's kind of like uh, at this point, you're just starting to see less and less of the feather down exposed, but we still want to be able to see it, so don't bury it. Maybe I'm just going to add some, try to break up my methods of application. I'm still going to put some of that. You'll still see some of it dancing. Like this, the new color is, um, sorry, I totally forgot what it's called. Where's my sticker? Oh, I'll be daggone. 8120 natural. So it's just simple color. So, um, sorry, I took a break. Kind of forgot what I was doing. So even though I'm putting it on top of the feather down, I'm still going to make sure I get some of this color here and there, little bits of it over top of that pale gold paint. And that's it. We're going to let this dry 100%. Come back with the next step of the process. But before I do that, let me show you what we're looking like. Give you just a quick... All right, see the difference in colors? Let's look right here. There's your feather down. There's your new color on top of it. So you start to see that? All right, let's let it dry 100%. Come back and get moving. So, see you in a bit. Okay, second coat. The last layer is completely dried. Can't even call it the second. Get this one here so it doesn't keep popping up on me. So now we're going to go to a third color called Medici Ivory. Same process. It's a little bit lighter in color. I'll put it on my trowel. Using less and less material each time because I want to make sure that we see the other colors poking through. 
And I'm gonna pull it somewhat tighter. Not somewhat, I'm pulling it tighter. That way it kind of skims, fills in some areas. That way it's, this is a semi-transparent or translucent material. So when I pull it tight, all the other stuff underneath is gonna start poking through. And we're just gonna get hints of this coming through everything. That's what we want. So we get this really interesting look. It looks like it's heavily textured, but it's not. And that's all I'm doing. Put it on, pulling it tight. And that's it. Let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, that's it. Simple finish. Let's peel the tape off, take a look at what the finished product looks like. All right, so let me do that. You don't need to watch me peel tape. Okay, we're dry. Let's take a look, see what we have. All right. See all that fun color going on? All that, look at all that light just dances across all the shimmer stone. Bring it up here real close for you. So you can see the various colors and how they work together. There you go. That's it. Great little fun finish. You could put this anywhere you can think of, except exterior. It won't hold up. But yeah, there you go. That's it. I will make sure to put everything in the comment section below. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask down below. Um, shoot me an email whatever, uh, call the studio. But that's it for today. I'll see you next time. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.